Oh. Hello, good evening everybody. How are you today? Buenas noches. Hello, Hello teacher. teacher. It's good, good to have you here. Good Welcome night. back. I hope you have a nice time of rest, of relax and resting at home with your family and being safe. Okay. Yes, uh, I need it. <laughs> yes we really need it. Yeah, it, no matter that we are at home, but we sometimes are, are very tired at the end of the week. So I'm very happy that you have had the chance to relax yourself and be with your family. Um, okay, I want to thank you for your understanding that we have to cancel the last class uh, of last Friday, previous to the vac vacation. So uh, I appreciate that this coming Friday, we can connect the same uh, time, the same hour, in order that we can replace the content. And I just want to share with you that, as um, Jonathan said in the WhatsApp group, for this week, the plan is that we are going to advance a little bit faster. Normally, during the first week, we just cover one, one section and start the section two. Uh, but um, in the second week, is very determinant for us to complete the section two and to complete the section three and even uh, to review the midterm exam, right? So, that, that, so that's what we are going to do in order that we have chance for the section four in the uh, third week. And in the last week, we are going to cover the section five and the final exam. So I see that you have had uh, some questions, so I can help you after the class, of course, and uh, we can continue solving any difficulty you may have. So for today, I'm going to share with you the platform in order that you can see where exactly we are going to work today. So I would like to confirm that you can watch my screen. Um, okay, can you watch uh, the platform screen? Yes. There? Okay. yes, teacher, I can okay, see. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, yes. um, for today, we are going to cover the section, uh, the lesson objective 2.0 that says, in this session, you will learn vocabulary uh, for common health problems as well as uh, listening, uh, as well as listening to a conversation where these new words will be practiced. Uh, then in the platform, if you, if you go, you will find this presentation that is called Health Problems. In there, you will uh, listen and you will practice and you can repeat some new words and vocabulary related to health problems. Later on, you will uh, advance until section 2.2 that says in this session you will listen to a conversation where common health problems are mentioned using different using infinitive complements so we are going to learn a little bit more on infinitive complements and then again you have another uh, video where you can talk about health problems and then we will cover until uh, section 2.4 that says in this session, infinitive complements will be taught um, and they are used to ask and give advice. Okay, ask and give advice. For example, what should I do for a cold? It's a good idea to take some vitamin C, right? To take. When we are, when we are talking about take some medicine, you say take some pills, take some aspirins, take some vitamin C, etc. We don't say drink, right? We say take, right? Eh, voy a decir esto en español solo para que quede claro. Eh, cuando hablamos de tomar medicinas, eh, no decimos drink. Ciertamente hacemos la acción de drink the pills with water, right? Hacemos la acción de tomarnos la píldora, ¿verdad? O la pastilla con el agua. Pero cuando hablamos de del medicamento per se, uh, even though if you, uh, no matter if you talk about aspirins, vitamin C, acetaminophen, or any other uh, kind of medicines, you say to take, right? When you're going to swallow, cuando usted se la va a tragar, ¿verdad? La va a ingerir. Esa, quería hacer esa aclaración. Then, um, we are going to advance, if we can today, if not tomorrow, we are going to cover the infinitive complements. And we are going to use uh, some words like ask, uh, to, to ask, pedir, ¿verdad? And give advice, y dar consejo. 
ask es un, es una, un verbo que nos eh, que implica eh, preguntar, ¿verdad? Para uso pedir, right? Ask eh, advice, ask for advice or give advice y, y dar, ¿verdad? Que es la, eh, la, la lo opuesto. Okay, after we finish this, we will see 2.6 knowledge check, but I'm going to stop sharing this part here. Vamos a dejar de compartir y hasta que veamos el contenido, eh, trabajaríamos, ¿verdad? Si podemos ahora, si no mañana, en dar las aclaraciones del 2.6 eh, knowledge check. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Okay, teacher, sí, porque en eso tenía duda yo. Sí, no sí. Eh, uh -huh. Correcto. Entonces, eh, como les decía, con mucho gusto desarrollamos la clase y después yo me quedo totalmente a su disposición para responder todas las, las dudas o si quieren lo vemos ahorita, ¿verdad? Si gusta. No, te llamo a explíquela. Ok, bueno, perfecto. Gracias por... por... Ok. Eh, de repente cuando no les contesto de momento, los vi que estaban ahí en el chat bien animados y me alegro mucho, ¿verdad? Que ya están de regreso, pero no les podía atender porque estaba justo en otra clase, pero no tengan duda de que inmediatamente después de nuestra clase, si algo no queda claro, pues yo estoy para asistirles completamente. Aclaro esto porque no es que no les haya querido contestar en el momento, sino que estaba atendiendo a otros compañeritos de ustedes. Ok. We are going to start with the vocabulary first, and then eh, for today, I would like to confirm. Can you watch my screen? ¿Me pueden ver la pantalla que tengo acá? Yeah. Que dice health yeah. problems? Okay, perfect. Yes. yes. So, we have different health problems, yes, but teacher. basically, thank you. We are going to talk about the most common, okay? One of the most common is asthma, a backache. Vean que esta palabrita, ache, eh, se escribe a C H E ache y se pronuncia ache. Entonces eso eh, implica dolor. A backache es un dolor de espalda, right? An ear ache, like here, an ear ache, it's dolor de oído, ¿verdad? Eh, también tenemos headache, dolor de cabeza, eh, terminan en ache, ¿verdad? Y también tenemos el toothache, ¿verdad? O dolor de de diente, ¿verdad? O, o en este caso Puede ser una muela, pero decimos toothache. And then we have other affections like asthma, a cough, eh, I said a headache, a sore throat, a backache, an earache, a heartburn, a stomachache. También in, in the US you say stomachache. But in the, in the British English, in the United Kingdom, you say a stomachache. But it's, it's, it goes separated, right? It's in the... Uh, writing that you have the difference. Uh, a broken leg, a fever, the muscles, sunburn, a cold, the flu, a rash, a toothache. Okay, so normally when people see that we are not in our 100%, that we are not like the same person that they normally uh, uh, look uh, or that, they, that we are not uh, behaving the same way that we normally do, they ask us, how do you feel? Yeah, and people say, how are you? And we can say, if we are okay, we say, fine. But if we don't, if you're not feeling okay, you can say, I feel sick. How are you today? Good. Or you can say, awful, right? How do you feel? Great. So you say, I feel terrible, if you don't feel well, right? How do you feel today? Fantastic. Or you can say, miserable, like, I don't, I cannot stand this. And then you can say, I'm sick, I feel sick. Or you can say, not so good, not very well. Okay, so you can say, how are you? I'm sick. How are you today? I feel sick. How do you feel? Not so good. How do you feel today? Not very well. So, eh, people, when, when we provide a response or an answer like that, people say, what's the matter, right? What's the matter? And you can say, I have a headache. I have a backache. I have an earache or whatever problem you may have. And people normally uh, becomes like, um, eh, they try to, 
to uh, make us feel uh, like they are uh, taking care of us or that they care about their problem. And they say, I'm sorry to hear that. They become like empathetic and they say, I'm sorry to hear that. Or when you see, when you uh, see or hear that someone is not well, then you can ask, what's the matter or what's wrong? It's the same. You're inquiring, you're asking what happened to the person. And the person who is sick or has a health problem may respond, I have a health problem. I've got, I've got plus the health problem. For example, I have a sore throat or I've got the flu. Es como ese I've got, es como agarré la gripe, ¿verdad? O me dio la gripe, ¿sí? Uh, okay, next. Here I have more images and vocabulary related to health problems. For example, a broken leg, a bruise, a cold, a cough, a cramp, a cut, a cut an earache, a fever, a headache, a runny nose, a runny nose, a thought of throat, a stomachache, a, st a stuff nose, a sunburn, a toothache. Teacher. Yeah, tell me. Uh, a cram, is, what is the meaning? It's like a calambre. It's calambre, es un calambre, uh -huh. Que nos puede dar normalmente en las piernas, usualmente en las piernas, en los pies, a cramp. You can say, I have a cramp on my leg, I have a cramp on my foot, si es en un solo pie. Or you can say, I have a cramp on my feet, si, si es los dos pies, ¿verdad? Recuerde que uh -huh. es un eh, irregular eh, plural. Okay. okay, so here, eh, doctor, I need your help. When we're sick and we go to the doctor normally, we are like a little bit uh, scared and then we go for help and then you say, doctor, I need your help. And you can say, my hair is falling out. I'm going bold. I'm losing my hair. Oh, my head hurts, right? What's wrong with me? My head hurts. Es como mi cabeza me duele, ¿verdad? Eh, ese es my head hurts. My skin is itchy, itchy. Ooh, I cannot stand it itching. I can stop scratching. Scratching is the action. When I am it, uh, when I uh, my skin is itchy, I I'm scratching, right? My ears are sore. I cannot hear. I have a toothache. I think I have a cavity. Cavity es una carie, verdad? My arm is sore. Sore, me duele, está lastimado. I cut my finger. The bleeding won't stop. The bleeding, el sangrado, right? Eh, viene de blood, sangre, bleeding, sangrado. Um, my, my waist is getting bigger, right? I'm overweight. Uh, my nose is runny. It's like <sighs> in trying to clean, but it continues being uh, runny. My eyes I, are dry and watery. I cut my tongue. Mm, it's painful. My throat is dry. It's like, in my case, I need to take some water. I mean, drink some water in this case. Because my throat is dry. I can stop coughing. Like, <laughs> um, my chest. My chest feels tight. I can't breathe, right? My stomach hurts. My knees keep locking. Este locking es como cuando hace ese ruido, ¿verdad? Que decimos, me truenan los huesos. My, my knees keep locking. My legs feel weak. Weak, débiles. I twist my ankle. Es como cuando me torcí el tobillo, ¿verdad? I twist my ankle. Twist es me torcí, es una torcedura, ¿verdad? De una parte de su cuerpo. Okay, here I have some extra vocabulary for health problems. For example, in this case, I need your help, right? In order that we can match this vocabulary, I will try to expand these. So we have 28 and I would like to have some volunteers. Me gustaría tener algunos voluntarios para poder completar este ejercicio de vocabulario. I would like that you can watch the, the images. And I have in the middle of the slide, I have uh, the vocabulary, for example, temperature, 
doctor, x-ray, hospital, eye drops, plaster, nurse, tree, sling, thermometer, headache, ambulance, uh, orderly, pills, stretcher, flu, operating room, check up, inhaler, sleep desk, cough, syrup, earache, stethoscope, crutches, prescription, teasing, toothache, tablets, injection, stomachache, wheelchair, uh, stitch, stitching plaster. Uh, so, who would like to start? ¿A quién le gustaría comenzar? Vamos a ver. You can take yeah. the easy ones. Okay, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Adelante. Um, the number you, one you say is the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Wheelchair. Very good. Thank you, my dear. Okay, another volunteer? Let's doctor. see. Let's, mm -hmm. Doctor is 20, 20, oh, uh, seven? 27 or oh, 27. Oh no, yeah. el de abajo es, ¿verdad? El, el número es el de abajo, ¿verdad? Sí, el, el número es el de abajo, el 27 es el, sería el doctor, right? Oh, yes. No es el 29. Doctor. 29. Let's see. Yes, you're right. 29. That's okay. Yes, it's okay. 29. Very good. Okay, let's see. Thank you. Next volunteer. Me, may I? Mm -hmm, please, yes. Uh, X-ray is the number 14. Yes, number 14, X-ray. Very good. So let's see, another volunteer. Me, teacher. I, okay, may please I? proceed. Please. Uh, hospital is the number 22. 20, yeah, let's 20. see. Let me see 22. Yeah, um, even though it seems that it's 20, 32. Parecería que es la 32, ¿verdad? Como que es el símbolo. ¿Sí? Mm -hmm. ¿Sí? Ok, excellent. Sí. Thank you. Ok, next volunteer. Siguiente voluntario. Ok, adelante, please. Hold Mm -hmm. It's number four. Let's see. Yes, for the cough. Sarah for the cough. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Okay, okay next volunteer. Lester is yeah. number 16. Let's see. Yes, that's right. They have a, a broken leg, so they are uh, preparing a, a blast, right? Thank you. Okay, next volunteer. Ambulance and 30. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah, number 30 is the ambulance. Right. Very good. Thank you. Next volunteer. Let's see, let's see. Ok, eh, por ahí estaba Noria y alguien más, pero no logré ver quién era el compañero. Si me dice mi fulanito y después va eh, la compañera. Mi teacher. Adelante. Ok, Telas, coméntenos. Eh, Nurse 22. Okay, 22. Let's see here. Nurse, right? Okay, nurse is yeah. 22. Yes, that's right. Okay, let's see. Vamos a ver la compañera que, que nos había pedido la, la palabra. Okay. Uh, ¿Eh? Mm-hmm. Number eight. Yes, number eight is pills. Very good. Okay, I need at least two more volunteers. Por lo menos dos voluntarios más. Uh, maybe we won't be able to complete the whole thing uh, here, but I would like I would like that you can uh, 
complete this exercise at home. I'll send you, if possible, tomorrow these materials in order that you can continue practicing, okay? With the new words that you don't know and that you can complete and match the new word with the, with the illustration. Okay, uh, one more volunteer, un voluntario más, vamos a ver. Upper, upper could you repeat, please? 17. 17. 17. Let's see 17. 17 is here. So, uh, what is your... Operating room. Yes, it, it could be... Op Let's see, where is the word? Operating Operating swing room. Let's see, doctor. Operating, operating room. room. Operating room. Operating. Yes, operating right. room. Yes, that's right. Okay, okay, excellent. Thank you. So, if you see, there are many uh, new words here. So, I will ask you to please look for the new uh, match and look for the new uh, words and that you can practice them in order that you can memorize. So, now is your turn to practice. So you can say, what's the matter? Or what's wrong? I have a headache. So when I say I have a headache, I have the subject plus the verb have plus the noun. How are you? I'm sick. How do you feel? I don't feel well. Or I feel terrible, right? I hope you, and then the emphatic word is, I hope you feel better soon. So this is an expression. And I have here a conversation. Um, in this conversation, Jani is sick and she calls her boss to explain what the problem is. So, and then the conversation is like this. Good morning, this is Mr. Ruiz. Hello, Mr. Ruiz, this is Jani. I have a situation. Eso, I have a situation is, tengo una situación, verdad, o tengo un problema. Eh, quiero que pongan atención a esto. Cuando estamos en el teléfono, que más adelante va a ser otro tema que tenemos, eh, et, eh, phone etiquette, cuando yo estoy al teléfono, no, yo no digo I am Patricia, sino que yo digo this is eh, Patricia, ¿verdad? This is Patricia de Morán, how can I help you, right? This is. Hi, Jani, tell me, what's the matter? I'm not feeling well today. My stomach is killing me. I am sick as a dog. Okay, I understand. Two days ago, I was feeling under the weather too. Oh, really? There's something going around. I hope you're feeling better. Oh, yeah. I'm in tip-top shape. Take it easy, Yanni. I hope to see you on Monday. Thanks a lot, Mr. Ruiz. Have a nice rest of the day. Vean que aquí todo lo que está en bold, en negrita, son como... Um, Idioms, right? In English, they llaman idioms, and aquí en, en español seríamos como dicho, ¿verdad? My stomach is killing me. Es como mi estómago me está matando. I'm sick as a dog. Me siento enfermo como un perro. Eh, I, was on, I was feeling under the weather too. Es como me sentía también como lloviendo sobre mojado, decimos aquí, ¿verdad? O estaba yo en las mismas, ¿verdad? Que tú me estás diciendo ahora. There's something going around. Es como que hay algo en el ambiente, ¿verdad? O hay algo que está, eh, algún virus o algo que está rotando por ahí. Eso es, there's something going around. I'm in tip-top shape. Es como, estoy en mi mejor momento ya, ¿verdad? Es como, eh, como decimos en buen salvador, en estoy de toque. O sea, estamos bien, ¿verdad? Take it easy, es como tranquilo, ¿verdad? Tómalo, como decimos en buen salvadoreño, tomarlo al suave, de manera relajada, tranquilo. Entonces, ¿por qué les enseño esto? Aunque no es un inglés académico, pero muchas veces la gente cuando habla de sus enfermedades o de sus aches, de sus achaques, ¿verdad? De sus dolores, utiliza esas expresiones. Eh, no vamos a practicar necesariamente eso, pero era importante eh, decírselo porque a veces cuando eh, la gente utiliza esas expresiones, and we are not American speakers in, in, in the context, we can be lost. Okay, look at the doctor's office. Hello, doctor, I need your help. Hello, Sarah, what seems to be the problem? Well, I have a bad cough and sore throat. I also have a backache. How long have you had these symptoms? 
about two days now. Have you taken your temperature? I've got a high temperature. Have you got any other symptoms? No. Mm, it sounds like you got the flu. Take aspirin every four hours and get plenty of rest. Make sure to drink lots of fluids. Call me if you're still sick next week. I'll do, thanks. Okay, see, see here, this is a more formal conversation. Esta es una conversación más formal porque no es entre compañeros, verdad, de trabajo, sino que está más eh, between the, pa the patient and the doctor, right? So you don't say eh, hospital. In this case, when it's a consultorio, you say at, at the doctor's office, right? It's an office. Lo que nosotros conocemos como un consultorio en español, en inglés sería office. And the hospital is what we really know as a hospital. Y el hospital es lo que nosotros también conocemos como un hospital. So, what seems to be the problem? ¿Cuál parecería ser el problema? And then the person describes, I have, I have, this and this and this. How long have you had these symptoms? How long? ¿Desde hace cuánto tiempo has tenido estos síntomas? And she says about two days. You can say about two days now, about three days now, about a week now. Um, I've got a high temperature. I've got, es como me dio o, o tuve, ¿verdad? Una temperatura alta. Have you got any other symptoms? Have you got, ya, yeah. como te dieron, ¿verdad? Otros síntomas. Okay, it sounds like, parecería que, it sounds like, you've got the flu. Ese you've es como you have, you have got the flu, como que adquiriste eh, la influenza, ¿verdad? And then again, take, take aspirin every four hours and get plenty of rest. Plenty is like enough, suficiente, ¿verdad? Suficiente descanso. Make sure, make sure, asegurarse. Make sure you drink lots of fluids. Vean la diferencia. Take aspirin every four hours and get plenty of rest. Make sure you drink lots of fluids. Call me if you're still sick next week. I'll do, thanks. Okay, um, according to the idioms that I explained before, uh, I have here the, the real meanings or the real expressions, but I want to explain that idioms are words or phrases which mean something different from their literal meaning. For example, to be in, one, in one's ears in work means to have a lot of work. It's like estar hasta los oídos, ¿verdad? En el trabajo es como tener mucho trabajo, esa sería la forma formal o correcta. My stomach, my stomach hurts badly, es el equivalente a decir, my stomach is killing me. To be very sick, is like as sick as a dog. To relax, to rest, is take it easy. Not feeling well, it's the formal way to say, um, let's see. Co um, Yeah, let's see. Not feeling well, it's yeah. under the weather too. In great condition. In great condition is a tip top shape, right? Don't have time to, can afford to. Many people have the same thing. There's something going around. To phone to the, to the office to say you're sick. Call in sick, right? That's the call in sick. To phone to the office to say you're sick. Okay, what we are going to do now, okay, we are going to conclude the, the topic of the idioms and then we will work uh, in the conversation. Okay, some other idioms is like um, alive and kicking. It means in good health despite health problems. As pale as a ghost, extremely pale. A death door, very near death. Back on one's feet, physically healthy again. Back on one's feet is physically healthy again. Feel on top of the world, to feel very healthy. Go under the knife, on, undergo a surgery. Queen around the, the gills, to look sick. Sick as a dog, extremely ill. 
under the weather, not feeling well. Okay, uh, here. Um, I have. I think that this is e this is easier in order to go uh, later to the conversation. I would like that you can take a picture of this. And me gustaría que le tomen una una fotografía a esta imagen. We are going to practice some of the vocabulary here for the health problems. So we have here these health problems, multiple choice, and the idea is that you can look for the best answer. For example, for patients with cancer undergo treatment. So, let's hold it here. Hagámoslo acá por el tiempo, porque ya vi que estamos, sí, y después vamos a los breakout rooms uh, for the conversation. Okay, I need eight volunteers again. Okay, number one, patients with cancer undergo chemistry, chemotherapy, or physiotherapy treatment. Which is the right answer? Chemotherapy. Letter? Letter B. Letter B, right? Chemotherapy, that's right. Number two, Henry broke her arm, so he needs a spin, swing, sling. Sling. Swing. Uh, sling or swing? Vamos a ver, veamos los meanings. Por eso lo, lo, lo quería mandar al breakout room, pero, pero quiero asegurarme que lo tenemos el meaning acá. Vaya, un sling. Vamos a ver. Vamos a poner el sling mini. By un sling in Spanish medical es me he roto un brazo y ahora tengo que llevar un cabestrío. Entonces, quien dijo la opción C es el correcto. Sling. Es un cabestrío. Es justo lo que tiene el chico on her arm. Right? So, it's letter C. C. Yes. Number three. Make the heart to work better. Peacemakers, pacemakers, peacemakers. Letter B, peacemaker. No, number letter A. Mm -hmm. Peacemakers, ajá, uh -huh. let's see. Let's see, vamos a ver. Es un marcapasos. Vamos a ver, porque uno es como. Eh, a ver. Ahorita le digo. El letter B. Veamos que sí, es pacemaker, porque el primero es eh, pacificadores, ¿verdad? Y el C es como hacedores de piezas. Entonces el correcto es B. Right? Thank you. Pace, eh, pacemaker. Right? Number four. Sally can speak. She was born dumb, blind, or crippled. Letter A, Tam. Mm, pero dice que she can speak. No okay. dice que she can hear. Ok. Entonces. Cripple. Uh, cripple. Ya les digo el meaning. Cripple. Porque Tam es sorda, ¿verdad? Okay, crippled meaning is a person unable to, a ver, to walk or move properly. Uh, no. It's, it's crippled. No, it's, it's dumb. Sí, tenía razón, porque crippled es como alguien para pre, parapléjico, ¿verdad? Que no se puede mover. Tiene razón. El dumb es sordo. Number five. Uh, esos son tricky, ¿verdad? Solo son palabritas. Mande. No pueden hablar. Ajá, exactamente. Es una, una, una consecuencia de lo otro, ¿verdad? Cierto. Perfecto. Bye. Pero tricky. Vean el siguiente. Thank you. Eh, and dumb is temporarily unable or unwilling to speak. That's right. 
pero can be temporary. Vean en la definición, temporalmente incapaz de hablar. But maybe if this person get a, an ear device, maybe uh, with the time they can learn to speak. ¿Verdad? En muchos de los casos, cuando utilizan un aparato, ¿verdad? Un earring device, they can sometimes speak. Eh, algunas veces, ¿verdad? No todas pueden aprender a hablar. Vean, number five. Pero es bien tricky, pero allí como la, no había otra opción porque cripple es parapléjico, ¿verdad? Entonces la, la opción correcta era dumb, así que estaban bien. Number five, save his life after the accident. Resucitation, resurrection, o resucitation. Letter C. Letter C. Letter C, así es, la resucitación, pero médica, ¿verdad? No es la resucitación espiritual, ¿verdad? O, eh, de, 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 o, o la resurrección espiritual, ¿verdad? Number six, Peter need glasses due to, the, due to his eyelash, eye strain, short eye. Letter C, short eye. Yes. Number seven, Alzheimer causes serious blood, head, or brain damage. Brain. Brain, brain damage, yes. Number eight, clean your teeth to prevent tooth, dismay, decay, dismiss. Letter B, decay. Decay, yeah. And a synonym of decay is cavity, right? Remember decay or cavity is the same thing. Es la misma, ¿verdad? Decay in cavity es caries. Okay, very good. Now, In the time we have, I would like that we can take a picture, if you can please do it, a picture of this conversation which I consider is like the best, like the more formal. And then we are going to work together trying to elaborate a similar conversation to talk about health problems. And then we are going to use the list that we have here, right? When I say, doctor, I need help. So, I'm going to send you both. Okay, so let me send it to you. If you can take a picture, it's okay. Si usted le puede tomar una imagen también, excelente. So, let me send it to you. Okay, we are going to have five minutes in order to practice this conversation. So, what basically I... Uh, ask you to please do is try to use the vocabulary uh, of the health problems in the conversation to express how do you feel, right? Okay, and then we are going to okay. come back to the plenary session and then we are going to share with, with our classmates. And finally, uh, let's see, pero creo que antes de, perdón, pero mejor antes de eso vamos a contestar porque a veces el tiempo nos traiciona. Voy a contestar lo que la compañera tenía dificultades. Porque ya estamos en la práctica. Can you watch my screen? ¿Pueden ver el, el la pantalla? Yes, I see. Yes. Ok, perfect. It says, instructions. Read the following questions and write the best advice for each health problem. Remember to use the complement. The infinitive complement. You don't need to rewrite the, what is in the brackets. En este caso... Eh, vamos a ver mañana con detalle los infinitive complements, pero eh, dice, what should I do for a sore throat? Eh, ahí si se fijan, estamos utilizando un modal auxiliary, should, to give advice, para, para, para dar consejo, ¿verdad? O uh -huh. para pedir también. What should I do for a sore throat? Ya vimos que un sore throat es un dolor en la garganta. Entonces, eh, el, el infinitive complement es esto. To take some, eh, lo puede escribir to take some o to take some vitamin C, right? To take some okay. vitamin C. Eh, puede escribirlo completo o puede escribir únicamente to take some. What should I do for a fever? It's a good idea. It's a good idea. Esa es otra expresión <coughs> que también podemos utilizar. Eh, lots of liquids. To drink. Entonces, ¿por qué se llama infinitive complement? Porque estamos utilizando un verbo infinitivo, to drink, tomar, right? En este caso, beber, ¿verdad? To drink 
lots of liquids. Ya habíamos explicado la diferencia entre to take, que es el acto de agarrar la pastilla y ponérmela en la boca, para swallow, para tragarla, ¿verdad? Y to drink, que es el acto de beber un líquido. Ok, number three. What should I do for a sunburn? For a burn, a burn, no dice que es un sun, es a burn, una quemada. Puede ser una quemada en la cocina, ¿verdad? Porque cuando es una sunburn, que lleva la palabra sun, sol, al inicio, y sabemos que es una quemada solar. But in this case, it says, what should I do for a burn? It's sometimes helpful, algunas veces es de mucha ayuda. To put, puede dejar solamente to put, porque ya está entre paréntesis, so, some um, ointment on it, o lo agrega completo, to put some ointment on it. Ointment es la pomada, ¿verdad? Ointment. Um, yes, ointment. What should I do for a toothache? Ya vimos que todos los ache son como pain, ¿verdad? Pain synonym, synonym, dolor. So you say it's important to see, to see a dentist. Mm -hmm. Lo puede escribir solo to see y dejar el complemento en paréntesis o ponerlo todo, ¿verdad? To see a dentist. También puede decir to go to a dentist o to go to a dentist, ¿verdad? Ambos verbos se entienden lo mismo. To see, eh, ver a un médico o a un dentist, o to go to the doctor, or to go to okay. a dentist. Teacher, in this number, I only write to go because I... Por eso me sería eh, negativo. Ah, le faltó el otro to. To go mm -hmm. to. To go to, yes. Ok, number five. What should I do for a cough? It's a good idea to get some medicine. You can write only to get or complete. To get some medicine or to take, right? To take some medicine some or medicine. to take some medicine. That medicine. Yes, both are okay, right? Ok, you can take a picture if you need. Pueden tomarle una imagen si así lo desean. Thank you, teacher. I only have a pronounce and the number one and the number four. Okay, excellent. So, you so uh, you're welcome. So, because of the time uh, for tomorrow, we are going to continue talking about the medicines and uh, that's for tomorrow that we are going to develop the 2.7 that says that uh, we are going to listen the vocabulary related uh, to containers following this part of the conversation between a pharmacist and a customer, right? So, uh, and then we will continue studying the modal verbs, but this is going to be tomorrow. So I'm going to stop sharing. And I'll send you now to the breakout rooms. So let me... Okay, let me go back. Uh, remember that in the conversation, you can use also the expressions, um, what's the matter, right? ¿Cuál es el problema? What's the matter? And what's wrong? ¿Verdad? ¿Cuál, eh, qué, ¿Qué es lo que está mal? ¿Verdad? ¿Qué es lo que está eh, pasando? ¿Qué, ¿Qué no está bien? What's wrong? And how are you? Right? ¿Cómo, cómo estás? How do you feel? ¿Cómo te sientes? Okay, those are the possible questions and then the, the health problems, you have all of them in the picture I sent you. So let's go now to the breakout rooms. And since we are 13, just a few, we are going to have only four people in the group. So I would like to ask you to try to do the conversation, right? Okay, please join when you receive the invitation. We will have five minutes in order to conclude the, the conversation and using the vocabulary I sent.
we we are we do someone can can i help me what is the conversation 